you could be wiser as an educated advisor. Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator. On today's show, the government programs for seniors, part one of our series on the Heckham Retirement Strategies with mortgage broker John Mingles, all here on Let's Get Down to Business. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you, Steve. Well, John, we're going to be getting into Heckham in a second, but let's just talk about the first three things. Now, you're a little far away from Social Security, not quite John's time. It's getting right? up there. It's coming closer. But think about it. At the time that we're recording this, I was 62 a couple years back, and I bypassed taking Social Security because I saw the end game of age 70. Now, most, I was shocked. There's an article last week. Tell me, if you th- what do you think about this? Only 4% of all seniors wait till age 70. Well, we see that with our customers. Most of our customers hit 62 and they immediately start taking They just start triggering. Yeah. Now, don't they know that it's a 25% discount from the full retirement age? I think they do, but a lot of them need the money. So, well, so they really actually, they yeah. need the fiscal income coming in all the time. Correct, yes. Wow. Well, again, I just try to exhort you. If you're in your 50s, you need to prep for this event. If there's any way you could stall, listen, I'm just turning full retirement age and I'm still waiting till 70. 66 for boomers at my age group is full retirement age. But I'm telling you, if you could just wait four more years, it's 8% simple. I have nothing in the market guaranteed that's going to pull a return like that. Yeah. Okay, so remember, you have to judge for yourself. When's the crossover period for you if you're married, you and your wife? What's the crossover period? If I wait till 70, when I could have taken money at 62, if I wait till 70, when's the crossover? When was it a good deal? Remember, if you have issues like your family has certain impairments that are congenital and you don't have long life in your family, well, I could see age 62. But, John, you and I, we're all young guys. We feel pretty good. We have good longevity in our family. I want the most, and I think I'm going to need it because I think my wife, who will survive me, will be well into her 90s. So remember, when you're talking about Social Security, it's not a he decision. It's a we decision. Now, Medicare, I know this sounds good. I mean, people like, you know, you're still on, you're still buying yours, right? Uh, Yeah. The the Obamacare. Group health. Group health. And hopefully, you know, they'll settle the health care issue. Well, I think our premiums went up 19% this year. Is that right? Yeah. Thank you. Well, I know that in the exchange, I think there's one left in Arizona. And whatever their number is, it's not good. If you're a senior in your 60s, that number is brutal. So high deductibles, high premiums. I hope the Republicans and Democrats can get together and finally carve out something in defense of our health care for, for um, our Americans. And with seniors, though, we have Medicare. Now, one thing I just want to bring up before we get into the heck of thing, on Medicare, the last two years before you trigger Medicare, you need to think about your adjusted gross income because they're going to do a means test on your income. And it's really important, if you're an advisor watching our show today, because it's an our advisor show, You need to give your people a heads up. If you needed a reason to meet with people, this would be a big one. I cannot tell you, under the IRMA regs, I have so many clients paying more money than they need to pay, and if they would have known it, they said, I could have deferred this income, I could have taken a little bit later, put more away in a deferred comp uh, model, I could have done all that, and now I'm paying serious money. It's 134, so I have people that are paying 300 and something. Hmm. It's ridiculous. We have to manage it. Number two, you're going to have to get some kind of supplement. Medicare B doesn't cover everything. Some people that are seriously healthy, you may want to look at Medicare Advantage. No premiums. It's low co-pays. But if you had a problem, you could pay up to $5,500 a year out of pocket. But I'd say I got people that are paying that in premiums easily. Yeah. So that's a big thing. But now third, John, mortgage. You've been in the mortgage thing for a long time. Yep. And you were. You got called over to the dark side of mortgage. You used to be an Arbor gig, right? With a sort of you were a certified financial planner. That's correct. Yeah. So, John, tell me. Let's talk about regular mortgages today. Man, to me, it seems like we are in the well, hot buyer's market. Is that true? Well, that is true. We're doing uh, purchase. There's lots of great mortgage programs out there for people trying to buy houses. Low low down payments, credit scores that are lower than normal. There's programs to get around that. Now wait a minute. We're not going back to 2008, are we? No, no, no. But but it's, when you just said, hey. It's a little down. Well, you know, the government's always trying to create uh, mm-hmm. programs to mm-hmm. initiate first-time home buyers. But, but beyond that, the, the refinance market is, is doing great as well. Even mm-hmm. though you hear the Fed's raising rates, mortgage rates are coming down. The long-term rates are coming down. Mm-hmm. So with home values up, we're seeing people cash out, consolidate debt, mm-hmm. uh, or just 
drop their, their mortgage insurance uh, or just mm -hmm. get a lower rate and a lower payment. So, Just for our listeners, right now, I know we're at the end of June now. By the time this uh, actually airs, it's going to be sometime in early July. What's our fixed 30-year? Well, uh, currently, you know, like the par rate with no points, about 3.875. That's just three eighths of a point higher than when Obama, or excuse me, when Trump took office or was elected in mm -hmm. November. So, and do you expect him to stay pretty flat or pretty uh, and stay at this area? Well, I think if the economy slows down uh, mm -hmm. and the Fed keeps raising rates, obviously long-term rates will come come back down. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see. We'll have to wait and see. Okay, now that sounds like could be uh, people doing arms. Are they doing interest only? Well, but right now with the interest only product has basically been eliminated with Dodd-Frank. So mm -hmm. uh, we, don't, we don't see a lot of interest only. There are products out there that offer an interest only payment, but the rates are so high, mm -hmm. it's about equal to a principal and interest payment. So, so it doesn't make do sense, right. correct. Yeah. Okay, now for seniors though, we have this thing. When you turn 62, the Home Equity Conversion Mortgage Program comes out. We have Social Security for income, we have Medicare for our health. Now we have housing assistance from the government through HECM. Tell me a little bit about HECM. In the conversion programs, there's about three things you can do that make that, up the yes, body of the law. That's correct. So with the HECM, you can eliminate your mortgage, or yeah, in, in essence, you can refinance with the HECM product, uh, wipe out the mortgage that you currently have, and the HECM product. What's nice about it is the payment on the mortgage is basically eliminated until that very last payment when you no longer own that house or you're mm -hmm. deceased. Um, a great second option with the HECM is the HECM for purchase, which a lot of people don't know about, is that you can actually purchase a new home with a HECM mortgage. Mm -hmm. uh, and it allows you to leverage off the HECM and, the, and buy a house roughly twice of what you would be able to buy if you're paying cash for a house. So it's a that's, lot of- That's huge. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and just a little a side note for our advisors that are watching today, I am in HECM myself. I bought a home under HECM. It cost me 47% of the total sales value of the home, and that's all. Now, I don't have a mortgage payment. I still have a mortgage. I just don't have a payment. The, pe the last payment is like 2,102, the year 2102. Yeah. So they have to have a time certain horizon to market. I will be dead and long gone. So, but my point though is, is that this is a huge opportunity to free up money. Most boomers do not want to take a mortgage into their retirement. So... They figure out, how can I do this? I've been paying long-term care for my for my own parents. I've been paying tuition, and I never would, I was able to pay her down and pay down my mortgage. This well, is huge. It circles back to what we were talking before. A lot of my clients are taking Social Security at a young age uh, because they need the money. With the HECM, you can actually eliminate probably the biggest mm -hmm. mortgage or the biggest debt you have. Uh, so it, it is a great option for the right in the right situation. John, what's the cap? Do you remember what the cap is for for Heckam? What can, what kind of a house can I buy? It's an FHA insured product, and so they've capped out. The maximum would be six hundred thirty-six thousand one hundred fifty dollars. So any, you can buy a house above that. You just have to to make up uh, the difference in cash. So most middle Americans that are looking at this are going to fall well within that number. Yeah, and so if you're in your sixties, basically uh -huh. you would put half down. I mean, it's a rough number. So if you were had, if you had two hundred thousand dollars, you wanted to put in, into a house, thinking I'm going to buy a two hundred thousand dollar house. Now with the HECM, you could go up to all the way up to four hundred, and it gives you a much Huge. broader range of options. You could eliminate your mortgage. You could actually free up other monies for other things. I mean, there's a lot here, and I don't know hardly anybody that knows the second part. Most people know reverse mortgage for income or eliminating mortgage, but they don't know they can buy a house. Yes, yeah. What about the third option? Well, the third option is a line of credit. Um, the HECM uh, product offers a line of credit that is incredible. And I think we'll get into a little bit more in the right. program, but it, it's a it's an amazing way to uh, supplement your income uh, to protect against having to withdraw from you know, IRAs and 401ks and down mm -hmm. markets. And so it's it's a it's a great financial planning tool that, when managed correctly, can create a huge synergy in your mm -hmm. overall financial planning tool. I love. This new thing in Heckam on this equity line of credit, and in fact, I love the adjective even more, appreciating equity line of credit. Correct, yeah. I mean, oh my gosh, you know, uh, uncorrelated to your market value. We're going to get into that in, in, uh, in I think, our fourth or fifth segment. So we have these three things, Social Security, Medicare, and now Heckam. Most people knew the income portion of the Heckam strategy, home equity conversion mortgage. Now we're adding buy a home for half or less 
or have an appreciating line of credit. I think, what is it, 6.1% right now? Well, yeah, it's tied to the interest rate that, that's associated with the loan. So, yeah, if uh, the current rate on an arm mm -hmm. right now is probably about 6%, including the FHA mm -hmm. insurance premium. That's correct. Unbelievable. And don't forget to watch our next segment on the Home Equity Conversion Mortgage Program, part two of our series on the Heckam Retirement Strategies. And keep in mind, before moving forward with any of the ideas on our show, always check with your tax consultant, legal counsel, or compliance officer. And don't forget to subscribe to my consumer show, Steve Savant's Money, The Name of the Game, daily content that you can post on your website, social media accounts, and database distribution. I'm Steve Savant. Thanks for watching.